This is Wishmaster on our 31 spooky movies of Halloween. Wishmaster is a fresh take on the legend of the genie from Wes Craven. In it, an ancient djinn is released on modern day Los Angeles and begins to grant wishes to anyone he comes across. But this isn't a Robin Williams genie. This is a different type of genie, a genie from Timu. You know, off brand, disappointing, cheap. Every wish is full of mistranslations and at least one will give you cancer. If you make all three wishes, the djinn will take over the world, which of course begs the question, why hasn't the djinn taken over the world yet? Are you telling me that in all the thousands of years that they've existed, they haven't found anyone who was both greedy and stupid? I mean, come on, we found one and made him president for goodness sakes. But my goodness, what a fun movie. What a fun, stupid movie. This is 90s camp in the best possible way. It's like a hamburger from your favorite burger joint that is so greasy and covered in fat that it turns the paper they serve it to you clear. You know it's bad for you, but your mouth waters with every bite, and as your arteries clog, your waistline expands, the only two words you can gasp out of your mouth as you go into cardiac arrest is worth it. That is what Wishmaster be. Yes, Wishmaster is a burger from the heart attack grill. That's a metaphor I just made and I happily stand by. So let's talk about exactly what makes Wishmaster bad. The acting for one, it's pathetic. I have never seen a cadre of more uninvolved, uninterested actors in my entire life and that's counting people like Robert England, who honestly looks like he just rolled out of bed to say some lines as a favor to Wes Craven without even reading the script or knowing what he was supposed to be doing in the first place. The lead of the movie, Tammy Lauren, is horrendous. Her line readings are feeble at best and eardrum destroying at worst. A wildly uneven roller coaster of unhinged, overreacting, and senseless banality, where she seems almost bored by the murderous supernatural shenanigans that are happening around her. This performance is fascinating. It goes from bad to worse and then right back around to captivating because you just want to know what strange choice the actress is going to do next. I would have loved to have been on that set just to hear her thoughts on this role. Thankfully, the bad acting does not completely sink Wishmaster. No, the acting is completely overshadowed by the horrendous special effects. Do you remember late 90s CGI special effects? The stuff of Spawn or an American Werewolf in Paris where the special effect didn't even look like it was part of the movie, but rather a moving sticker that someone just put on the film. My goodness, I can't believe that there was a time that we looked at those types of special effects and thought, wow, that is the future of cinema. Of course, those special effects haven't aged very well. They've aged about as well as an organically grown banana on a hot dashboard. These low resolution, poorly composited, and completely out of place special effects were put into movies not because they were needed and not because they looked good because God knows they didn't. They were put there because studios wanted to show off. It was that age where movies were using CGI not because it was the best choice, but because it was considered cutting edge and they wanted to chest thump and get butts into seats no matter how terrible it made their movies look. Hey kids, look how modern and cool we look. Practical special effects? <laughs> Those were so last year. PlayStation 2 cutscenes are what you want. Spoiler alert, it was not, in fact, what we wanted. So what saves Wishmaster? What keeps this movie from becoming a forgotten train wreck? Andrew freaking Divoff. The man, the myth, the legend, nay, the God who plays the djinn single-handedly saved this movie, and I really hope 
Wes Craven bought him a lobster dinner as a thank you. Heck, I hope Craven bought him an aquarium filled with lobsters because he deserved it. Divoff plays the part of the djinn with delectable abandon, giving us a villain who is not only fun to watch, but also a villain who has a genuine good time doing what he does. The djinn is every bit as fun as Freddy Krueger in some sequences and in others when he's getting used to the modern world of 26 years ago. It was really quite a treat to see him involved tragically briefly in a horror movie where the villain was the fish out of water. If I had a wish, it would be that the movie would have explored that further. Wishmaster does have a lot of fun with its premise and let's be honest, in a time where the silver screen was crammed full of teenage dominated vanilla PG-13 rated slasher movies, Wishmaster offered something unique and different, something, dare I say, high concept and daring. It wasn't completely successful, but it was still a lot of fun to watch. Not high entertainment, but entertainment nonetheless. And I certainly don't regret giving this forgotten gem plucked from the debris of a shattered statue and ready to ruin your world a brand new look. Also, uh, keep an eye out for the horror movie star cameos because there are a bunch. If you want something a little different in your horror movie watch list, I suggest you make your wish come true with Wishmaster, a magical addition to our 31 spooky movies of Halloween.